Battleground Productions presents Brass, the audio serial, episode 17, Unwanted Callers. The year is 1885, but not one that would be familiar to you, for this is a world that differs in many ways from the one in our history books. For one thing, while the annoyances of a London street in Mayfair that we are familiar with include traffic, salesmen, and hurdy-gurdy men, they most certainly never included a dozen formidable toughs dressed in black garb hefting a large, custom-built battering ram. But that is precisely what Cyril sees as he peers out of their stylish townhouse through a specially designed viewer set in the wall. What do you see via the periscope? Is it called a periscope when it's on the side of a building, Father? I suppose I could call it something else. Long tube, set of mirrors, it's a periscope. What do you see, Cyril? As Mrs. Drake said, it looks to be about a dozen men, and that long beam they're carrying looks an awful lot like a battering ram. Positively medieval. Shall we expect a trebuchet next? Medieval yet effective, I fear. Pity we don't have any boiling oil. We have something better. Assuming that the crew we had working on the house in our absence followed through on my design. Designs for what, Father? I decided after our unpleasantness with that mudlark fellow a few years back that our home could use a few extra defenses. Finally, one of your expenses I can fully support. Thank you, my dear. I tell you, this assault is fortuitously timed. I had been hoping for an opportunity to test the apparatus. But who are all these people? You heard that young man captured by Drake, Gwendolyn. It's everybody. But it simply can't be everybody. No matter the size of the criminal conspiracy, this is London. The common people will rise to our defense as soon as we can get the word out. I pray you're right, my dear. Yet never forget your history. General Gordon found the mob easy enough to raise in his day. And when your mother and I were young, more than once the reform and technocrat parties took their elections to the streets. The fever of riot breaks out in our city on far too regular basis. Yet another argument for relocating to the country. And leave London. I know. All the conveniences of armed assaults on our home. They've picked up the beam again, Father. Ah, the battering ram. Madeline, take over at the streetoscope. Periscope. What shall I do, Father? I need you and Gwendolyn for a special mission. We need to take out those snipers. One thing at a time, husband. With respect, my love, I disagree. For my plan to work, several things must happen at virtually the same time. Now... Here's the plan. All right, Dan Gov, how's this supposed to work? Simple enough. Carry the ram up these stairs. Hold off about a yard away, then on my count, you lot give a step and a swing and we're not right through that big door. What if they're waiting on the other side? Well, then they'll be as flat as a Shrove Tuesday pancake, won't they? But what if they have guns? My lad, they most certainly will have guns because that's the sort of clever clugs they are. But once that door is down, we'll issue all you boys with these pistols, and then you'll have guns as well. Can't we have the guns first? You can't swing a ram and shoot a gun at the same time now, can you? I suppose not. I'd feel better with a gun all the same. Gentlemen, in case this was not made clear to you, there is a plan. It is a plan which has been as rigorously detailed as a military invasion, as that's exactly what it is. An invasion planned by the Crime Minister himself. And because of that, we are going to follow it scrupulously. I suggest if you have any problems with following these orders, you leave right now. And given the Crime Minister's reputation, I would suggest you not quit running until you come to some place where you think he won't find you. And personally, I can't imagine where that place might be. Are we clear? Good. Now, up with the load, lads, and up the stairs. That's it. Now, boys, on the count of three. One, two... (laughs) (laughs) What the hell were that? I'm dealing! I'm drowned My arm's broken. Lieutenant. Sir. Report. They've got some sort of ruddy fire hoses hooked up to the side of the doorway, sir. That's obvious, you dolt. How did they know we was coming? I don't know, but they swept our crew right off them steps. Shall we try it again? What would the purpose of that be, I might ask? They might have run out of water. Lieutenant, you're a fool, but you might be a useful one. Very well. Send a message back to Costa Mob. We've cut the telegraph lines, now it's time to cut the water to the oar of the brasses. How do we do that, sir? That's for them to figure out, isn't it? 
Send the message and then rally the men. They don't look like they want to be rallied, sir. They are strewn across the street and several looks to be in need of medical aid. Which they'll get after we get that door knocked in. Right then. You lot, gather over here. Oh, you two. Where are you going? Uh, off for Dick Lip, Tenant. <coughs> Larry here needs to sit down. You think his leg's busted and he's coughing blood. All oh, right then. Make way, make way. Now the rest of you, we're going to work this out, all right? Our men are going to turn the spigot off for the brass house and then we're going to try that again. My arm's broke and my head's bleeding. Shut it. At least none of you got it as bad as Larry. Who's Larry? He's... Where are they going? Who was that? Lock the door. How long do we have? Minutes at best. We need to get to the roof. It's all right, we're the brasses. What is going on out there? We're just rooted up to your roof. But you're wearing... Yes, we're wearing the garb of street ruffians. No time to explain. The roof? Uh, up those stairs, then follow the stairway on the left, up to a trap door. Much obliged. Hurry, Gwendolyn. They've got rifles. You've got a gun, I've got my stick, and we've got surprise. And I love a challenge. Remember, Cyril, take them out quick, and no flourishes. Nonsense! What's a fight with no flourishes? Aha! Where are they? One is here. One is down in the street below. I was taking no chances. Lord Whitestone? Gwendolyn Brass. And her brother Cyril. I got here as quickly as I could. But how did you... I was traveling by rooftop, and I saw these two men waiting in ambush. They did not see me. This one is still alive. The other is... Oh, very much so. Good on you. They shot my manservant. How is he? He'll live. He better. Otherwise this one won't. Wake him up, Gwendolyn. Eh? Eh? He's uh, coming round. Good morning. Uh, you, you, you miss? You tried to kill my brother. Oh, is that this gentleman? It is. Oh, well, <laughs> apologies, sir. Just, just doing my job. I assume, despite your dress, that your job is not sweeping chimneys. Uh, not as a rule, ma'am. I'll say this. Your firearm is immaculate. And of highly advanced manufacture, I suspect that you are a professional killer. It's your living, sir. Do you mind telling me how much you would be paid for killing me or members of my family? Sir? What's the bounty on us and who set it? Ah, well, it, it, it's not a bounty per se. I'm sorry? Well, you see, there's a war chest. And we were given ample pay at the beginning of this operation. It was thought that this would allow us to operate in a greater cooperation with each other. But surely there's some sort of bounty on my head, at least. Oh, there is, sir. Well, not an actual pound sterling, mind you. Sorry? Well, uh, the person who, as it were, eliminated you from the game, as it were, shall have all absolutely no tax to pay for five years. Tax. Well, that's what our fees are called. That better be quite a bit. Oh, it is. Now, who is this boss of yours? Oh, say, you, you don't mean need me to tell you, do you? I'd prefer verbal confirmation. Oh, I prefer to be thrown off this building than make the mistake of preaching on my boss. I see. Lord Whitestone. <laughs> Wait! <laughs> yes, Miss Brock. <laughs> I've a better idea. Over here, if you please, Lord Whitestone. <laughs> Oh, 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 thank, thank you, miss. Don't mention it. What's your name? Ricky, ma'am. Let's assume we don't need the name of the man who hired you and the men down below. Along with the other six you sent to kill us. No need to brag or threaten, Cyril. Now, Ricky, you refer to a war chest. Can I assume that given this financial arrangement, you see yourself as a soldier in this enterprise? Yes, miss. I, I, I think you could say that. Very well. Let us extend the military metaphor, then. We and you are at war, and on opposite sides. You are our prisoner. As you may know, military courtesy often extends towards prisoners. Your assistance in this matter would be taken into account if our side should prevail over your side. If. Of course, if we're killed, well, of course, anything you should tell us will die with us. But let me point out to you that we've defeated your meticulously planned ambush. Consider how we're doing so far, and that if you talk to us now, we would seek clemency for you in any reckoning. Mm, it's a tempting awful, Miss, but uh, you've no idea of what's coming. 
Tell us then. I can't. You can, Ricky. You kill me? Let's just drop him down one of these chimneys. Odds are there isn't a fire going. All right. No! Oh, no! No! Oh, I don't oh, know if oh, he'll fit down oh, this one. Oh, no! I don't know where to go. Well, even if he doesn't, what's the worst that can happen? He breaks his legs and stays stuck there for a few days before someone lights a fire? Surely you know something, Ricky. I oh, oh, don't know everything. All I said now, but it's going to get worse. And at the end, well, I pray it don't come to that. To what? You didn't hear it from me. You didn't hear it from me. But but I heard, if, if nothing else works, they've commandeered an airship and, and they're going to drop a bomb right on top of your house. Excuse me? That's what I heard. It, it, it just made me wild talk. Like armies of men taking over our street and shooting at us from rooftops. All right, Ricky. Do you have a timeline on this? I, I can't reach my chronometer, ma'am. It's 11.47. My goodness, it's been a busy morning. Uh, one o'clock, miss. What? That's what we're told is the final wave. 73 minutes? That's right, that's right. If we want to live, it's best we get out of here as soon as possible. Makes sense. Only you're staying. Let him go, Lord Whitestone. Ah! Oh, really, Cyril? There's no fire. Besides, he shot my manservant. All right. Priorities. Preventing loss of innocent life, including ours. Agreed. I will alert all our neighbors up and down the street. How? Jumping roof to roof. If I start now, assuming I don't fall or get shot, I can make the street in under an hour. I could do it more quickly. Lord Whitestone, you have a greater task. I want you, however you possibly can, to stop that airship. All right, Gwendolyn. Where is the highest vantage within a mile? Wellington Arch over at Hyde Park. They're building a mooring station platform atop it. Very well. I will start there. Cyril, you have to get to mother and father and warn them. Father no doubt has some sort of escape plan. You think he had the tunnel built while we were away? No, he didn't like the tunnel idea. He and mother had a beastly row about it. All right. So all I have to do to get to them is work my way past a dozen thugs and through our barred front door. You love a challenge. I do, don't I? Hmm. All right, I'm off. On your way, tell the housekeeper to get everyone out the house via the back garden and to do it as quietly as possible. Past the garden? There's a fence out onto a shared alley. Got it. Hope to see you both at tea time. Thank you, Lord Whitestone. My pleasure, Gwendolyn Brass. Seeing as we are both heading off to war... Yes? A kiss for good luck? That was... Worth repeating. Cheerio. And with that, the two young people run in opposite directions and leap off the roof, heading to their separate destinations. But with death approaching both in the streets and in the air, can even their extraordinary efforts be enough? Find out when we next join the story of the first family of the realm, Brass. Brass is manufactured by Battleground Productions. For credits and more information on Brass, including our films and live stage shows, Go to battlegroundproductions.org and find us on Facebook.